Greetings! I'm Troy Newham, the author of 284, The Search for Love, Hope, and Faith, available on Amazon.com and Kindle in paperback versions. And this week's message from Moses is going to be about the election results. Okay, at first I was angry. And I thought I was angry at Obama, but I realize I'm not. Because if a rattlesnake bites your child, you cannot be angry at the rattlesnake. It is the nature of the rattlesnake to bite people to defend itself. And you probably can't be mad at the child. He didn't know better. You did a poor job raising him, or else he would have known. Don't pick up rattlesnakes. But a year later, if the same child tries to pick up the rattlesnake again and is bitten, again, you can't be mad at the rattlesnake. His nature has not changed. But you can be furious at the child for not learning his lesson. And that is why I am furious, said Americans for electing this man president, because what has improved? Absolutely nothing. He promised the illegal aliens, hey, I'll get you the dream mat, did he? Nope. He promised gays, hey, I'll give you legitimacy, did he? Nope. Promised everything to everybody, did he give anything to anybody? Nope. Promised unemployment go down, has it? Nope. Promised the economy to improve, has it? Nope. Nothing has improved. And yet he gets out there and he says, let me again. And I promise, next four years, it'll be better. And we say, yay, okay, and why? Why did we do it? For no bloody reason. And, you know, I wrote in 2084 that communists had infiltrated the news media, the schools in Hollywood, and our politicians, and started brainwashing us, and here we are. I mean, this is the result right here. Nothing to show for it, but they vote because their party says, show up and vote. And sadly, I don't think there's anything we can do about it at this point. Just let it crumble down. I take one solace in the fact that I know, statistically speaking, that I will probably outlive Obama, and I will get to dance on his grave, and I look forward to that day. Because we survived the Revolutionary War, we survived the War of 1812, World War II, World War One. we survived the Civil War... We have survived the Great Depression. We'll survive Obama one way or another. But his little system is coming down. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, is the Obama found crowd is going to be the one that gets cut off first when China stops borrowing our money. The U.S. 10-year bond dropped 6% in value in one day after the election. That should tell you the future outlook of our debt. That should tell you the amount of trouble that we're in. Meanwhile, we had Morgan Freeman. Never has so much been asked of one man. He did not even want to be president. We forced it upon him, and he took it upon himself to lift us up out of misery. Yo and behold, for he is truly the Son of God. You know, it makes you sick. It made me sick anyway, but there we are. And here we go. So the question becomes, what is the future of the Republican Party? You know what I tell the Republicans they should do? Look, you have three branches of the Republican Party at this point. The Democratic Party is one branch. It is crazy left-wing, wacko, everything for free weirdos out there. The whole blue dog Democrat thing fell apart during the health care bill. There is no such thing. They pretend to be so they can get in power so they can then turn around and sell out to the party in the face of their constituents. Just ask uh, Ben Nelson or whatever his name was. They don't care. They don't care what their constituents want. They don't even care what they promised their constituents. When the party calls them to call, they're coming down their way. And you people best get to know that because you'll see a lot of it in the future. All right, so the Republican Party has three branches, conservatives, moderates, and libertarians. You know what? If you're in California, run as a libertarian. If you're someplace else, run as a moderate. If you're in the conservative South, run as a conservative. But get in the power. As far as the president's concerned, heck, why don't we just do what the Democrats do? We'll just take someone with no record, who's of darker skin hue, who can maybe play a saxophone or something, throw him up there and he can promise whatever he wants and as soon as he gets in power he can just do whatever the heck he wants because no one's going to hold him accountable anyway. <sighs> but I digress. The one silver lining that we can all take away from this is as follows. After eight years, he can't really bang Bush. He'll try. I mean, hey, he's already tried. We elected a guy who's already admitted that he doesn't have the answers. He got up there. I realize now that 
And Gary Trains, Washington on the inside. That's kind of a scary statement from the President of the United States who basically says that our system of government is broke. Because if you say you can't change Washington from the inside, what you really mean is that the electoral process, a representative republic, doesn't work and that we need to go to some sort of dictatorship where the president or the prime minister can do whatever he wants because that's what they do in other places. And he's always saying, I can't do it alone. I wish I could. He's saying out the narrative for it, people, and be on the watch because it's coming. You know, and then he turns around and he's like, uh, what Bush did to us? It, it can't be fixed in one term. It might take more than one president. It could take 5,000 years. That man, that man screwed us over. Trust me, I need a picnic basket. Uh, we elected this guy. He admits he has no answers. He admits that he cannot fix the problem. At the end of eight years, we are going to be toast. When the health care bill hits in 2014. I know you guys think you like it, but that's because all the bad crap happens in 2014. They were already predicting 9% unemployment for 2013 and 2014. When that sucker hits, the economy is going to tank. When they do get rid of the capital gains rate, the stock market is going to tank. When all this happens, our U.S. bonds going to crash down. Inflation is going to hit. China's going to stop buying our bonds, and we are going to be out of luck. Now, if I'm wrong, throw me a fat I told you so. I don't care. But I'm rarely wrong. So, you know what? We elected him. I had to deal with him for four more years. But I take great solace in the fact that I will dance on his grave. Probably in tap shoes, because I think it will be more satisfying to hear as I tap dance on his grave. Anyway... Again, I'm Troy Newham. I'm the author of 2084, The Search for Love, Hope, and Faith, which talks about the infiltration of our system by communists who brainwash us and turn us into cretins and less human. <sighs> it's really happening, people. Read the book. Read the book. I also recommend War Journal, my tale of revenge and self-loathing. Check out my blog. I've upped my blog to twice a day, if, whenever possible. As my way of protesting the events of the coming four years, I truly hope we survive. And more importantly, when all the riots happen and everything, I hope that we are able to hold on to the Constitution and don't let it get replaced by some European-style dictatorship slash prime ministry slash whatever. Because, as I always say, long live the Constitution and signing off.